Guys, welcome back to another Arsenio's ESL podcast or TOEFL Learning, wherever you guys are listening to this on. And guys, I've got some very, very good things for you today. I'm going to be focusing on, yes, the speaking question two and the speaking question three. Some of you had difficulty with this. Some of you need help with this. So again, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. However, I do not and will not play the audio. I want you to understand the techniques behind this. Now, some of you, and especially in speaking part three, which a lot of you would probably have difficulty with, uh, you guys don't know what details to pick out. Now, again, I've talked about the speaking question one already. I haven't done speaking question four. I'm gonna be doing that soon. Um, and I'm just waiting on everyone else to take the polls and whatnot so I can start going over some of these writing tasks and whatnot. And again, if you have any questions or if you want to have a nice little free 30-minute chat about ways that you can improve your score, you already know how to get in contact with me. So what I'm going to be focused on, focusing on today is the TOEFL Part 2, which is the Children Tutoring Center. That is, of course, the... Um, um, what am I trying to say? The, uh, the, 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 the subject. Oh my God, there it is. The subject of what we're going to be talking about. And then we have behavior chaining. That's going to be for the speaking question three. So again, you guys are looking at this. It's recorded. This is on YouTube. This is in podcast form. Everything's going to be provided in the links as well as everything else in regards to getting in contact with me, if you wish to get in contact with me. And without further ado, let's just break this speaking part two down. Okay, so you're gonna have a quick reading. Then after that is the listening. Now, here we go. Get your notepad, get your notepad. Tip number one, only spend about eight seconds on the reading portion. So if I could highlight this for you guys right here, bam! You guys see that, right? Eight minutes, summing that up. It could be a paraphrase, whatever it may be, okay? Did I say eight minutes? Eight seconds. Because what you're going to be graded on is the listening portion. Now, as you guys possibly know, with the listening portion, it might be a little bit easier for you, and especially for those of you who are fluent, because you're basically listening for two disagreements, two agreements, or whatever it may be. So, if I read this one out for you guys on the podcast, it says, for the reading, Children Tutoring Center. Starting next Monday, the Children Tutoring Center is going to be moved to Building NE10 from Building SE10. It has been experiencing a decline in enrollment, and there is too much unused space. So it is being moved to a smaller building. NE10 is located in the southeast corner of the campus. All currently enrolled students can get additional information from the school library. Now, you guys are gonna sum that up. What's the main gist? This, or I'm sorry, what is it? Uh, the, the tutoring center is gonna move from this location to this location. Why? Because decline in enrollment and there's too much unused space. That's all you're gonna say. It's eight seconds, okay? Eight seconds, if you can see that on video, all right? Now that we've covered that, we need to get into the listening. Now, again, within the first two, someone's going to agree, someone's gonna be angry, someone's gonna disagree, and then you're going to listen for those disagreements. Now, because this is the listening, and although you are reading now on screen, I want you to see where you're going to listen. Ah, does that make sense? Here, let me break it down. The long paragraphs, okay? The long paragraphs, this is where the complaints or the, the opinions, whatever you want to call it, is, okay? Normally there's two, maybe sometimes there could be three. Now, within the first two, uh, the first two back and forth, boy, girl, boy, girl, they're talking about a couple of things, and then one or the other goes into detail. So, in the listening for you on my ESL podcast, the girl says, did you hear about the tutoring center? The boy says, yeah, I heard it's being moved to building an E10. Girl, yeah, I'm upset 
with the school's decision. Ah, so now we have to listen to the girl's opinion because right after that, the boy says, why is that? And then she goes on with the explanation. Now the explanation goes a little something like this. Although I'm taking a business course, I want to be a teacher after graduation. And the Children Tutoring Center gives great hands-on experience for all up and coming teachers. However, building any 10 is too far away from me. Now, in that whole segment, you guys are like, oh, wh what should I say? Okay, well, she's talking about her standpoint, okay? In that first sentence, well, in the first part of this very long sentence. Although I'm taking a business course, I wanna be a teacher after graduation, okay? You're not gonna mention that. You could if you don't have enough time. However, the main point is, the tutoring center, what does it give? Great hands-on experience. And the NE10 building is just too far away. That's your example number one, okay? Now, the boy, of course, he's going to agree or disagree. In this case, he says, yeah, that's true. And the girl goes on to say, in addition. Now, remember with an addition, that's an example. That's what you have to pick up. You have to listen to it and you have to, uh, and that's what you're gonna be talking about in your listening. So she says, in addition, they are concerned with the course's enrollment. By moving the course so far away from the center of the campus, it will only discourage students from enrolling. Move it far away, discourage students from enrolling. That's the general gist, okay? And now the girl says, and goes so far to say this because the boy asks a follow-up question. He says, yeah. So uh, what should they do then? And this is the suggestion. Yes, I would like you to put this into your speaking too. And she suggests that, and she goes on to say, I think they should leave the course in SE10 and change its schedule. I know many students would take the course if it was after classes. Okay, so keep it in SE10, change the schedule, okay? They would take it if it was after classes. That's your general gist. And then you're going to formulate that into a talking. Now, or into a little one minute clip. Now, if you guys would like me to grade this specific one minute clip, okay, right here. If you press pause, you look at everything, take your notes, okay? Then go over to my Arsenio's English language page, send an audio, and you have a one minute audio to work with. So this is, this is perfect. And then, yes, I will grade it for free. <laughs> I am the best and I'm trying to help everyone out there. For those of you on my podcast, well, you know how to get in touch with me. For those of you on YouTube, well, you know, in the description, you have my Facebook page. You click on that, you send the audio and bada bing, bada boom. Guys, that is how you do the question number two. So now going into question number three. This could be a little bit hard because normally you hear a lot of personal examples given, okay? Now, again, same situation. You're not gonna be graded on the little summary that you're going to be reading, but you're gonna be graded more on what you say about the listening. I almost bit my tongue, excuse me. So here we go. On to speaking number three. This one's called behavior training. For those of you looking at the screen, let's read it. Behavior training is the process of breaking down tasks into small steps. People use behavior training daily for tasks, such as cooking, cleaning, or work. For many students, especially children, behavior training is a useful learning tool that allows them to take a large concept or task and break it apart into smaller steps for easier understanding. So you're going to sum that up, okay? What is it? Process, breaking down task into small steps. Give a short example, which obviously children, okay, these tools to break down a large concept into sizable little tasks, okay? Now, eight seconds, that's all I want. Now what I'm gonna do for those of you on the ESL podcast, you get the listening through my voice. For those of you actually watching me on the Facebook page or wherever, you're going to read it and you're going to listen. 
So, and those of you on YouTube, obviously you see the best of both worlds also. So without further ado, guys, let's go into this. Okay, so we said that behavior training breaks a large task into small steps. It helps teach by allowing the person to learn each step slowly. Well, this technique is actually quite helpful in assisting children to learn a routine task that is repetitive, such as using the bathroom, brushing their teeth, or completing a work task. Oh, task. I put an S at the end. Now, guys, he kind of reiterated what was in the reading, but he gave an excellent example, such as the bathroom, brushing teeth, completing a work task. Who? Children. It helps assist them. That's your example number one. Now he goes into his own experience. This is the one where you're going to have to pick out the main ideas from this experience. I will continue. So let me tell, oh, so let me tell me, no, uh, let me tell you. Oh my God, that was so weird. So let me tell you my own experience with this. When I taught my children to wash their hands by using the idea of behavior chaining, we know that washing your hands consists of a couple of sequential steps, which I broke down into five steps. There we go. One, turning on the water. Two, putting your hands under the water. Three, rubbing soap, not soup. I don't know why it says soup. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Wash your hands with soup. Rubbing soap on your hands. Four, rinsing your hands under the water. Five, turning off the water okay, or turning the water off. I taught my children one step per day to make sure they knew exactly what to do. After learning each step, they can link the entire process together. Thus, I successfully use behavior training to teach, to teach wash their hands, to teach them how to wash their hands. There we go. Oh my God. To teach them how to wash their hands. And that is the end. So, he broke it down into five steps. You're gonna use that example. Now remember, no examples given from your life. You're literally talking about what he had spoken about within that audio. So make sure you do not use examples from your life. I remember some of my students, they've asked me before, hey, should I use examples from my life? No, do not do that, okay? That is a big mistake, okay? And they're not going to give you a score whatsoever. You need to use examples specifically from what you hear, okay? Break it down and formulate it. And then you're going to give some good old, or you're going to give a nice one minute, nice little discussion about what you heard, okay? So eight seconds on the reading, going into the first paragraph, okay? This is very, this is, it's quite helpful in terms of assisting children with, let's say, bathroom, brushing their teeth, or completing a work task. He goes on to give an example in terms of how he was able to break down a simple routine with his own children. First was, mm -mm -mm -mm. you see what I mean? That's exactly how you're gonna do it. Again, if you guys speak very well, like I know a lot of you do, do not use a template. The goal is to use your English. See, if you use a template, you're gonna sound like a robot. You say, for example, okay, if you wanna say, for example, for instance, let it come naturally. Don't just say, for example, for example, the next step. Remember, I've taught you guys that already. So, guys, free grading. You guys already have it. Look at the behavior training, the reading, the listening. If you guys are interested in me giving you a nice little score, hey, you got to take advantage of the Facebook page. Click that link. Develop everything. Hey, Arsenio, you can send a message first. Hey, Arsenio, man, thank you so much, man. It was very helpful. I want you to record my nice little recording. And then you send your recording. You get that microphone. Toot. Okay, so this specific, you're going to sum it all up, okay? Now, again, if you want to use somewhat of a template to open up, that's okay, okay? You could say, oh, the discussion's about behavior chaining, which is, okay. And this specific speaker, based on if he's a boy or girl, gives this following example, okay? So I've done that speaking task a long time ago. It's on my podcast. You can find it on Spotify or anywhere on Google very easily, or just message me for that specific podcast. If you need a speaking template, if you are an elementary or pre-intermediate speaker, okay. 
but I know a lot of you out there are very good at speaking, okay? So do not use a template. And with that being said, guys, man, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in to another wonderful, 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 wonderful ESL podcast or TOEFL speaking podcast. Again, if you have any other recommendations, any questions, or if you want to inquire about services, let me know. And as always, I'm your host. Stay tuned for more people. It's quarantine time. Over and out.